Greetings everybody and welcome back to the Air Warfare Group. This is Juice and if you're watching this, you're one of our outstanding wingmen that is following the channel. Thank you. In this part one, we're going to cover some Hornet AAR SOP as it pertains to our new wingmen in the Air Warfare Group. Our standard is derived from open source documents like the ATP 56 Bravo air to air refueling, which is under the NATO standard series of 3.3.4.2. If you Google those, just as they're written there, you can find them too. And what we've done is we've simplified them or watered them down to adopt to whatever the mission simulator capabilities are, plus to the average time that we have to do this uh, as, a, as a hobby and the average skill of a new person coming online that has not done this in the real life. None of us are pros at this. We do this as a hobby. So we make it simple and fun, and I hope you do too. Some of the things that I'd like to point out right up front is you're going to get a lot of variety of air speeds and altitudes when it comes to uh, air refueling in the real world. And what we've done is we've taken our mission, which you guys can have access to, and we've made the tanker heights and speeds about where we think they should be and everything. So uh, I hope you guys... Uh, download that mission. I'll put a link where you can get the current one, but this one's being updated, so you may want to wait. The other thing is, is about the AAR tracks. Uh, they vary depending on the size of the aircraft, the number of receivers. There's so many different variables in there. So what we've done is we've done what the limits within DCS World allows us, and it works for us. So I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, we're ready to go out and uh, connect with the tanker. Some of the things that you'll want to make sure that you have set up we have the radios for our multi-point refueling tanker, which is Texco at 255.0, and we have them set on uh, preset number nine. Next thing you'll want to do is make sure your radar is set up to the appropriate range. You also want to make sure that your radar antenna elevation is set so that you can maneuver, maneuver your radar cursor to get it into the area you're trying to search and, fi and find the target. Thirdly, we want to go ahead and set up our SA page and make sure that we have the data link turned on. Finally, we want to make sure that we have the HSI page up in the center so that when we have the TACAN information dialed in, we can box the TACAN and then receive information in the HUD. Now, one of the things about TACAN in the real world that is also a little bit glitched in DCS world is if you're receiving fuel from a KC-135 or a KC-130, you get DME information only in the HUD. But if you are receiving from a KC-10 or KC-46, which we don't have in DCS World, uh, unless you have a mod, I guess, uh, you get DME and bearing information. So those are some of the things to consider when you're using this as a simulator for training. We're getting close. Uh, some of the things that we'll want to monitor as we're closing on the tanker is we're going to want to check our airspeed and our altitude frequently. And what we're going to try to do is push ourselves up to that non-visual range altitude of 1,000 feet below the tanker per our SOP. You'll want to monitor your velocity closure uh, constantly because you'll notice as you're getting close, if you're going too fast, you're going to have a hard time transitioning to the merge. As you get closer to the tanker, go ahead and adjust your airspeed so that you can be on airspeed for your turn when you go to the fighter turn on to get onto the tanker's tail. Check your altitude. Make sure that you hold at that 19,000 until you have the tanker visual. Once you're close to about 10 miles from the tanker, you need to be ready to maneuver. So you make sure that your airspeed is where you want it. Double check your altitude. Make sure that you have everything set. Again, monitor your closure and your DME. And once you have visual on the tanker, and at about 7 miles, depending on how far offset you are from the tanker's track, you can go ahead and start your turn. You'll want to maintain lag pursuit. This allows you to come in behind the tanker and not do an aggressive or a gross overshoot of the tanker line. While maintaining visual, climb to 500 feet below tanker altitude. Now that you have all this under control, go ahead and extend your probe if you're within the speed limits below 300 knots for extension, and then once extended and the door is closed, you can go from 300 to 400 knots as needed to rejoin on the tanker. Next, you'll want to take care of your MCOM. Make sure you check your radar, ECM, and lights as required. Within one nautical mile to a half mile, go ahead and climb to the pre-contact altitude and adjust your speed accordingly to re rejoin on the tanker. 
when you get to the pre-contact position, you'll want to be at five feet behind the basket. Once you drive there, go ahead and check in ready pre-contact. Once you make contact with the basket, go ahead and push forward five feet. Keep the refueling pod on the wing in the top of your HUD. After you've established that, you've got good control, maintain formation with the tanker, and monitor the lights. Now's a good time to talk about NPRS lighting. In the real world, we have three sets of lights. You have two green, two yellow, and two amber. And the reason they're offset on each side is in case you're not directly in line with the pod, you can see the light from either side. So if one side's blocked because you're off at an angle. Now when you have the green light, it means good flow. The amber light means you're out of limits. And the red light, depending if it's flashing or steady, means that it's not ready or to break away. Here's a little schematic that you can get out of the ATP that tells you what the lights mean in the real world. I can't guarantee that this is working properly in DCS world, but we just make it work for us. Once you're connected and your, your offload has begun, go ahead and maintain position on the tanker until it is complete. Once you've received all your fuel, go ahead and throttle back, descend slightly, and check and clear the airspace around you before maneuvering into any other positions. Once you've cleared the airspace around you, go ahead and cycle to the right and move to the right wing of the tanker. Once you're clear of other aircraft and stable, go ahead and retract the probe, set your lights as required, return to radar status, and emitters as required. If you're the first one to receive all your fuel, you'll want to come over to the aircraft's right side. Place the two engines in line where you can see them kind of lined up like this and make sure that you can see just the tip of the other wing over the top of the fuselage. Once everyone in your group is refueled, your flight lead will give you instructions what to do, and then you guys will depart the tanker and resume your mission. I hope you enjoyed part one. Stand by for part two coming out later in the week.